What's good, everyone? <laughs> it's the Aggie Coach, man. So uh, I want to welcome you guys to the post-game show, Fat 8 CSL, Southern Fellowship Conference Battle for the Get Big Cup. Uh, this is my, my post-game show. It's kind of, a, kind of a tradition for me now to um, do the post-game show after the big game, well, after each game. And um, just an opportunity for me to talk a little bit about my experiences with the, with the game. And um, yeah, man, just, just, just in general, man, what I thought about the game and how things went and, and um, the direction that the Fat Eight is going in. And, and that kind of thing, man. This game, man, this was the the first classic, man. The first of its kind. First classic. Um, Locke reached out to me and uh, wanted to do a non-conference classic uh, with a team that I hadn't worked with. And, you know, this was unique because he already had the kind of offense worked out that he wanted the team to run. And the bases and everything were tweaked already. The um, customizations was already done. So I had nothing, uh, nothing to do uh, with the configuration uh, of this team of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Uh, it was just up to me to work at running the offense the way that he wanted it to be run. Of course, you know, allowing me to have a little bit of fun with it and uh, fit it into the Fat Egg CSL style. And, and that was the thing. Uh, the, the Fat Egg CSL, man, like, or the st our style is so unique. The rules are unique uh, with the way that I like to play. And the main thing was making sure that the tie could fit into my play style um, without interrupting things too much. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, was I in for a surprise. Oh my God. Yo, man, this game, this game was a blast. First and foremost, let me say this, it was fun for me to shoot. I had so much fun um, shooting this game. And I think the big thing is the versatility of the, of the Crimson Tide has a lot to do with all the customizations um, on this team. These customizations are called fourth and one customizations. Um, they are big locks, personal customizations on this team. And um, one of the things that I can tell you, and I, and I really didn't start to realize this until about halfway through the game, everything about the Alabama Crimson Tide is situational. Um, many of the customizations on the players uh, have a lot to do with the situation that you find yourself in. And then you have to know what player to put in in a given situation to to get things to work. And it took half of the game, you know, for me, even after having a week to work with the team, like having that week to work with the team wasn't enough time for me to learn the team. And then there was also a huge learning curve on my part for learning the SF quarterback, um, which uh, uh, which was purchased from from Carl. Um, and um, learning the SF quarterback was another huge learning curve for me, which I didn't really get down until somewhere around the end of the second quarter. Um, I spent I spent somewhere in the neighborhood of about an hour and a half, sometimes to about two hours a day for about four days, um, just trying to learn how to pass 
with the SF quarterback. I mean, that alone was extremely time consuming um, on my part. And uh, the biggest problem again, the biggest problem for me in the beginning of this whole thing was with all of the new changes, the kicker and the, and the quarterback, um, and learning a new team, um, with all of the changes, uh, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest thing was getting it to fit into the Fat Eight style, and not allowing it to change the Fat Eight style so much. Um, although I did have to make some alterations to my play style at the same time, you know, I had a good time, um, a lot of fun. You know, just learning, man, and 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 for me, like I said, you know, I tell you guys this all the time, and it's very true. I'm very new to the hobby, so um, a lot of enlightening, a lot of enlightening adjustments that I had to make. One of the big things, big things, is learning about customizations, and this was a great experience for me because I learned that customizations are more than just cool poses. And that's the one thing about the Crimson Tide team that that I, I learned. Customizations is absolutely not just about cool poses. It's about functionality on the field. And what I found was certain poses allowed certain advantages and certain disadvantages in certain situations. And for example, you look at our play of the game. Okay, our player of the game is Sean Sean Alexander, the, the 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 running back for the Crimson Tide. The Tide came into this thing with six backs. I played with all of them a great deal. Spent a lot of time working with them, but it took time for me to learn what situation each back played best in. You look at the two big runs, two of the big runs that Sean Alexander had for touchdowns were sweeps. What was the situation? When you're third and short or first and ten and you have the ball on the short side of the field, if you run a sweep to the wide side of the field with Alexander, your the chances of you busting a big run is very high because he's a looping running back and the thing is once he gets the momentum going forward that base will straighten him straighten out i ran this situation over and over and over again i tried putting him in situations where he would run the ball right up the middle and he performed very poorly straight ahead but man when he has blocking lanes in front of him and you run a sweep with him to the right He's a he's a he's a right looper. Um, if you sweep him to the left so that he can loop right, you know, it's six. It's six. And once he get in the open, it's bye bye. It's no running him down. So it's like that, man. Is is the same thing with Amari Cooper. He's just one of those wide receivers. He's posed properly so he can get open. Even putting a cover corner in front of him could not shut him down because of the way he was posed. He's always going to have an outside release. So, you know, all of these things are uh, things that I learned. Same thing with Bobby Humphrey, who was for the most part the main back, like the starter in this game. And, and I did that with him um, because he was the one back that can run north and south and he can skate through those holes and he can get that four yards or five yards that you need. Um, the other thing was with the fullbacks, you know, there was, there are a bunch of different types of customizations, um, blocking passes, um, passing blockers uh, on the offensive line, um, blockers for running situations, blockers for passing situations. Same thing on defense. There's one linebacker that actually moves left and right. He's 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 uh he's um, turned sideways on the base. He moves left and right. So having him in the game added another dynamic um, to the game because it gave him a wider tackling lane. 
So he made a big hit in the game and recovered a fumble in the second quarter. So there was a lot. There was a lot to learn. There was a great deal that I learned in playing with this team about the about customizations. That last play that Julio Jones made. He could not have made that play if he had been posed differently because the way that he's posed made him up high, which allows the SF quarterback to pass the ball over the line and hit him right in the chest. So those advantages in, in having those types of pose, poses um, gave the Tide some huge advantages in the game. It just took me a long time to learn about them. Um, all in all, I'm excited. I'm very excited because I learned so much about customizations in this game and how customizations have to have a purpose. So that was that was an awesome, awesome learning experience for me. Um, in addition to having an opportunity to learn about weights and learn about tweaking. And I mean, this was just a great, great, great experience for me. And um, it was a fun game to shoot. So I'm looking forward to the end of season one. The Aggies have one more game. Um, they're going to be playing the Michigan Wolverines um, at that at, uh, next. And it's going to be the last game, senior night. It's going to be the last game um, of season one for the Aggies. And then we're going to be moving on to recruiting. And recruiting is a whole nother, is a whole nother ball of wax. It's a whole nother thing. So players of the game. Let me not get off task. Players of the game. Offensive players of the game for the Crimson Tide is Sean Alexander. And for the Aggies, you know it, it's got to be Mike Willis. Mike Willis kept the Aggies in this game. Offensively. Mike made big plays. Tony Horn stepped up. He got that kickoff return um, and then got a 33-yard run um, somewhere in the game. But for the most part, the defense, you know, they, the defense kept Tony Horn quiet. Um, Mike Willis, he did his thing. He, he threw several touchdown passes. He ran touchdowns, you know, all by himself. He made big plays. He made things happen. He got into the open. You know, he just could not win the game by himself. And when the Aggies started to pick up momentum in the fourth quarter, you know, it came down to just one big play and the defense broke down. So um, the Aggies, though, man, the Aggies to be an all-stop team, you know, I have, uh, I have like um, maybe five or six, five or six customizations on the Aggies team, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty much an all-stock team. I'm proud of them. The Aggies played well. They're fast. You know, they're strong. And they perform well. So, uh, at the end of the season, I'm going to be repainting them. They're going to be getting new uniforms. We're going to be recruiting, bringing in, um, bringing in fresh new talent. All customized. Um, I am really excited play of the game. The play of the game goes to Julio Jones. That big play at the end of the game. Big, big, big play. Julio brought it in. I was hoping that the Aggies was going to run them down and take that thing into overtime. Hey, no time left on the clock. Dog, it was a barn burner. It was a barn burner. This was a good game. That fourth quarter just kept me on the edge of my seat, man. Uh, it was just something else. So, those are my experiences with this, man. Quick wrap up, customizations, 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 yo. I just, I love it. I love it. I understand so much now about how important customizations for this hobby is. Um, it's gonna add a, another layer of uniqueness to the Fat 8 CSL. So that's it, man. I'm going to close it out. Alabama Crimson Tide win the Big Cup. Southern Fellowship Classic goes to the Tide. The Tide will be on the schedule next season, so the Aggies will get a chance to get them back. All right, man. Thank you guys for watching.